Welcome to The Strack House, a show about inspiring women making change. I'm your host, Sarah Strackhouse. Join us to hear their incredible stories. Thank you all so much for joining us for this episode of The Strack House. I'm so excited to introduce you to Shemaine Nugent. She is an author, fitness and health enthusiast, mom, dog mom, and of course, wife to internationally recognized rocker Ted Nugent and digital TV show host of Simply Shemaine. Shemaine, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. So I was so excited to have you on, not only because, you know, I love everything that you stand for, but you're a dog mom. Oh, yes. And you're obsessed with your dogs. I have (laughs) a very, we always say we have a very unhealthy attachment to our dogs. I mean, it's borderline, like literally we're building a new house. Yep. We have a dog wash room. Oh, I, I, I think that is, I mean, you're talking to another obsessive person. So, I mean, I think that is so incredible. I told my husband, if we move, we need a specific room where we can wash them easy, well, easily. Well, when you get to be my age and you bend <laughs> over and wash three large dogs, I have a German Shepherd, yeah. a Labrador, and a Labrador Catahoula Black Mouth Cur mix. Oh, He's so kind cool. of a mutt. Um, but bending over and washing them, literally mm-hmm. one time I couldn't, I couldn't get back up. Like it, it froze my back up, and I'm oh like, my gosh. "We got to do something about this." So yeah. we have we built a dog wash that is elevated, and it's like a a shower, yeah. an elevated shower. And I also have I that. a dryer. It doesn't have heat. It's made just for dogs, but um, especially German shepherds, yep. they shed incredibly. Yep. But the water. My German Shepherd. They retain it so yes. much. Oh my gosh. So it just brush it blows off the water from the yeah, That's dog. amazing. So I have a, a Is this about dogs? Pit. Yeah, right? This, that, okay. That's why I'm I brought sorry. you. On. Yeah, no. <laughs> well, the other one's a Bernice Mountain dog. Oh. So when we try to blow him out, oh he hates oh. it. And it's you know, it's hot. You know, he hates the heat. So I gotta I gotta take no, a you gotta from to, your book. No, yeah, yeah. You have to use the there's a specific blow dryer for dogs with mm. no heat. Okay, I'm going to have to look yes. into that. I will but, send you the link. Uh, and then <laughs> send me the video of your dog getting a blow dry because I will. I will use it on my show for a funny pet video. Oh, I love that. I have, <laughs> if you want funny pet videos, I have tons send to send them. you. Yes. Send them. <laughs> but I, so uh, another main reason I wanted to bring you on was um, I love your love for health and fitness. Um, and I know that you were healthy and fit kind of before the, you know, the big house I don't know, debacle, if yes. you want to call it. But, but I also want to um, get right to your story, story. I know you said you truly felt like you were dying. Mm. Um, and you sent over this video, the Killer House video, so I want to play a quick uh, clip from that. Sure. And this doctor wrote on his little prescription pad, get out of the house. Almost 15 years ago, Shemaine Nugent and her husband Ted were living the good life, enjoying each other in this home featured on the very popular show MTV Cribs. But what they did not know is that their home was killing them. So every time I watch that, I get chills. I get teary-eyed every time I see it. Every time we talk about it, like... I should have been an memory. actress because, like, I can cry on a dime. <laughs> like, I, if all you have to do is show me that. Yeah. Because it destroyed my life. And it sent me on a rocket-propelled, uh, I think, activity to just ex- share this experience that I had with so many others. Yeah. Because if it could happen to us, it could happen to a lot of other people. So tell people what was happening, what you eventually found in the house, um, and kind of, I, I know you talk about the fact that no one could diagnose really what was wrong. Right. So this was back in around, I started getting sick around the year 2000. Mm-hmm. 2001, 2002, I would have, I had the house tested three different times for mold. Mm-hmm. And back then, nobody knew about mold. Nobody was talking about it. People thought, ah, eh, you're fine. Suck it up. You know, just, I went to dozens of different doctors. I was popping migraine medication like it was M&M's, and I love M&M's. <laughs> but that was not good. And I was just sick all the time. I could sleep. I had constant headaches. Um, and I was a group fitness instructor. I was once named Detroit's most physical female. Wow. And I, I loved teaching. But what happened is about 10 minutes into my class, I found out that I, I felt like an elephant was sitting on, on my chest. I couldn't get enough air. And I kept going to do- different doctors who said, 
ah, you're stressed. They kept making excuses. Yeah. But what happens, Sarah, is that when you don't feel good on the inside, nobody can see it. Mm -hmm. It's not like you broke an arm or you've got, you know, burns or bruises or anything like that, but you know that something is wrong. Yeah. So I became my own investigative sleuth because nobody could help me. Right. And that's how I discovered so much about toxic mold. And we never saw anything in our home. We, it was basically the builder installed the flashing wrong and it was raining between the walls wow. for, for years. So I was in the home the most. Yeah. My husband was on tour a lot. My son was at school, but so I got the sickest. I right. was diagnosed with having pre-emphysema and I don't smoke. Yeah. And I also had four different types of mold in my bloodstream. Wow. Oh my gosh. So did you actually eventually find the toxic mold or how did that happen? We did, but again, they didn't know what they were doing. Right. Um, so we had different testing companies come in. Mm -hmm. Finally, we had um, a guy who had heard about what was happening to yeah. us and sent us to a toxicologist. So you have to determine what the problem is right. and where the source is. So once we did that, we found out the problem within our bodies. Ted and I both had four different types of mold in our bloodstream. That's crazy. Our son Rocco had severe asthma and he was on breathing treatments and had been for years. So all of this added up. And again, it wasn't enough to say, okay, you know, people who have asthma, Oh, just, just take your breathing treatment and you'll be fine. Right. Well, why should you have to do that in the first place? Right. You know, the human body, number one, has a natural defense mechanism to be healthy. Mm -hmm. And it wants to get healthy. But I would encourage you and all your listeners to, if you think there's a problem, there probably is one. Yeah, get it, get it checked out. Yep. And now you've dedicated your, you know, your life when you talk to people um, to spreading the word about staying healthy, fit. You know, what does that entail um, besides just, you know, making sure that your body feels right in those kinds of ways? Well, we're always coming up against some new toxin mm -hmm. in the air, soil, and water. And for me, it becomes a constant battle. Mm -hmm. I, I'm constantly trying to keep my head above water. Whereas once you get sick enough, like I had pre-emphysema, I couldn't walk up a flight of stairs if my life depended on it. And I had to do everything I could do to stay healthy and become healthy using functional medicine or what some people had referred to before as alternative remedies, mm -hmm. like infrared sauna, vitamin IV, oxygen, and change my diet. Yeah. Now, you notice I like Fritos. Yes, I do. Yes, I do know that. We had a, a so, wine tasting with Fritos yesterday. It was amazing. It was so much fun. I feel like, you know, life is meant to be worth living. So for me, I'm on the 80-20 diet, so to speak. Mm -hmm. 80 or 90% of what I do, I work out five days a week minimum. And I, I'm, it's not like I'm running a marathon. Yeah. I have to move my body because... It will, the older I get, especially, yeah. you know, you feel more joint aches and pains. And I actually have um, scoliosis oh, a little wow. bit. Yeah. So I have to, there's a, there's, especially as we get older, we've got to be careful of our joints. Mm -hmm. And I love that endorphin rush after a workout. Oh, yeah. I, that's my high. Yep. And it's, you know, it's a mental escape too. You know, I, I, obviously the physical benefits are great, but it's so that, that adrenaline rush and just get, you know, spending whatever it is, 30 minutes, an hour, hour and a half, whatever time you take, I, I love that it just kind of lets you escape mentally for a bit. It's like therapy. Yeah. Because, for, and I know you teach. Yes, yes. Because <laughs> for that hour that you're teaching, you can't think about your problems. Right. You got to put that aside and you, go, you have to focus on Susie who isn't bending her knees. Right. And it's great because, you know, if we... You've, you've seen the guest I had on, Joey Jones. Yes. Who lost both of his legs. Mm -hmm fighting for our freedoms, for our country. He's a military veteran. And, you know, the things that we have problems, you know, to some people aren't really problems. The things that we so-called bad hair days or, yeah. for me, you know, all of the little things that add up. Yeah. We need to have distractions in our lives to take our... Whoa. <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> just a book slip. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so is that a good omen or not? Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, so, um, yes, yeah, so I, I agree. It's Teaching is great. How did you get involved? So I, kind of a weird story. I had moved to um, Dallas area. We had been in West Texas, um, and I was waiting for a position to open up here at an NBC station um, in North Texas. Um, and until then, I was like, you know what? I want to get back into something because I grew up – I I played Division One soccer. I played Did semi-pro you? for a bit, and I so I wanted to get back into something that was athletic and something that kind of gave me a goal or drove me. Um, and I wanted to get back into something that also fed my faith. So I actually typed in church workout onto Aww. Indeed, and Camp Gladiator popped up. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and it's a you know it's a anyone can work out with Camp Gladiator, but it is um, founded on Christian values. I did not know that. Yeah, now yeah. I do. Oh, I know. And it, yeah, and it, they're in Waco. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Yep. And, um, but, you know, I have a friend who teaches that. Yeah. That's really hardcore. I mean, I, I love it. I love it. It gives you, you know, it gives you a challenge and it. You can, you know, work at your own pace, which I think is pretty cool. Um, but, yeah, so that's kind of how I got into it and the job came up. So. Good for you. Yeah, thank you. Good thank for you. you. Um, but I want to talk, at, I love Love that you're kind of also that you used to have your show simply Shemaine. Um, if you haven't found it, it's on YouTube, Facebook, you know, Instagram. Make sure you go visit. It's an amazing show. She has on all kinds of guests. Um, I remember talking before you started it. You know, saying that you kind of wanted to start opening up more, being a little more vocal about your faith and politics yep. and your views and stuff like that. Um, and I want to ask you because I think a lot of people feel this way but are scared. So in today's political social climate, you know, what are your thoughts about opening up and how to go about opening up? Well, it did take me a lot. Mm -hmm. When we visited the White House and had dinner with President Trump mm -hmm. years ago, three years ago, um, I posted a few pictures. And this was really my first taste of hate, mm -hmm. the, the hatred and um, it's funny because people who say that we oh we we should all be more tolerant those are the people that who will attack you the first yeah and so it took me literally four or five hours I'm my only you know I don't have a, a team right it took me four or five hours every day for five days to delete all the hate and even death threats wow. I have a, a few death threats that are on file with the FBI oh because gosh. I posted a photo right. of Ted and I with President Trump tolerant and unless it offends you uh, right that's it yeah. <laughs> and so you know it honestly I didn't do anything and even hunting really yeah. strikes a nerve with a lot of people mm -hmm. But they'll, they're, they're not going to give up their hamburgers. Right. You know? Right. Or, they or, just don't want to see how it got right. there. Right. You just don't want to, yeah, don't, don't tell me about it. So yeah. um, it took me a few years, and I'll tell you what was my turning point. Mm. And I just became a Turning Point ambassador. But my turning point for all of turning this. Turning Point USA? Turning Point USA. Yes, okay, yes, yeah. yeah. I'm, I just <laughs> I became that. a Turning Point. They reached out to me. Charlie yeah. Kirk reached out to me, and I'm okay. like, it's kind of like one of those things where, like, are you, are you talking to me? Yeah. Oh, you know? are, you, are you sure? <laughs> you yeah. sure? Like, you didn't that. ask for Ted. You wanted me? Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I'm getting to, to answer your question yeah. in a roundabout way. I think you have to follow your own guidelines and what feels comfortable for you mm -hmm. about putting yourself out there. But really, my turning point was Kanye West. When Kanye came out with his latest gospel album, which, yeah. why aren't the Dove Awards, why aren't they recognizing, they better be recognizing him because right. that is my favorite music. And even Ted, it was funny because our son, Rocco, who's going to be 30, yeah. um, he is a what we call a spiritual rapper. I love that. He doesn't rap about the bad things that some people rap about who are rappers. Yeah. He raps about being the light in darkness. Mm. He's very, very spiritual. And so Kanye was one of his idols. And Rocco and I were sitting down. We were watching Kanye appear on Joel Osteen's show a few months ago. And we're, we're like, at the time, we were in a 750-square-foot log cabin where we demolished our house that was on MTV Cribs. Mm -hmm. We demolished that, rebuilt a 750-square-foot log cabin with one TV, one bathroom. You know, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we were. <laughs> Rocco was with us, and and Rocco and I were like, Ted, we're gonna we're gonna watch this show. Do you want to watch it with us? And he's like, Yeah, yeah, whatever. I'll watch it. And he, it was live, and he said, This is my favorite music ever. Mm. He said, This is unbelievable. The way that the choir gets so involved, and for Kanye to step out 
mm-hmm. from his comfort zone and yeah. from surely people who said, you can't do that. Right. You can't. You can't go you're from You're this the, or you're that. Right, How are you right. supporting this? Yeah. So to answer your question, um, it's really got to be up to you. Mm-hmm. And I think God moves us. And I think if God keeps putting it on your heart, putting those thoughts in your mind, and keeps telling you in one way or another, you got to do this, you got to speak out. Yeah. I feel like really, since I've spoken out about my faith, I've posted more more things about my faith, mm-hmm. more things about politics. The uh, the overwhelming support that I've gotten far outweighs any of the the minor negativity. I mean, right. because I, I I still choose my path. You know, and I find out quickly if I've posted something that didn't re- resonate with right, everybody. Right. Okay, maybe I'll have to delete that photo. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that'll be next time. Right. right? Yeah. <laughs> Noted. They right. do not yeah. like this. But yeah. you know, for some people, like my husband, yeah. I've learned a lot from him. Mm-hmm. You know, he's always said, if the haters think that you're, or if the, let me rephrase this so it's PG. <laughs> if if the bad guys think you're a bad guy, that's okay. Yeah. Oh, I like that. So, you know, who are you working for? Right. I'm working. I'm moved by God. Yeah. I'm working for Him. Everything I do, I want to be my actions to be His. I love that. So you talked about kind of Ted and you know your conversation there, and I think it's the way I've seen you guys interact and and you know the conversations that I know you've had um, kind of here at the studio. Um, it seems like you guys have a really nice relationship and a really supportive relationship. Um, so I want to ask, how important is it to have that support system when you're trying to speak your mind or you're trying to follow your dream or or spread awareness over you know an issue that's important to you? And I want to ask a little bit about you know your relationship, how you guys met. Well, uh, how long is this podcast? I write <laughs> as long as we need it to be. Um, it, Ted will be the first one to tell you we don't always see eye to eye. Mm-hmm. Um, we are on, on so, in some ways, you know, politics dogs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Family, conserv- being a conservative, values, hundred percent values, and the food that we eat. We try to be healthy, things like that. But he says things in a way that, that I don't. Mm-hmm. And some of his tastes are different than mine. Sure. I wasn't a rock and roll fan when we met. How like funny. I never, so you asked how we met. I was a traffic reporter for a rock and roll radio station in Detroit. Wow. And all I did was I would come in the studio and I would do my little traffic updates every half an hour, maybe even 15 minutes. And Ted came in uh, and filled in for the morning crew for a whole week. Wow. I knew nothing about him. I couldn't have told you one song that he did. I knew that he was a rock guy. Right. And he had long <laughs> hair. I didn't. Yeah. But when you're talking to people for four hours every day. You get to know them. You get to know them. And honestly. Especially early in the morning. I worked on a know. morning show. And you get to know the good, the bad, and the ugly at that hour. That's right. <laughs> and honestly, um, I was engaged to be married before I met him. Wow. And my ex-fiance called off the wedding. So I was like this to Ted and, you know, like, don't come near me. I, right. You know, very nice and everything. Yeah, but, I, but not you know, interested. I'm not interested yeah, in being a notch on the totem pole, so right. to speak, or the bed post, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and so I, I put off that vibe. Well, Ted always gets what he wants. Yeah. And <laughs> he, when he first asked me out, I said no. Wow. So I think that was the hunter instinct in him that was yeah. like, R- somebody actually said no. Well, and everyone loves the chase kind of thing. You know, yeah. I think it's the dawn of time, you know, re- like, you know, you always want what you can't have kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. There's, so. there's obvious, there was obviously a connection Chemistry. there. Chemistry. And honestly, we met October 3rd, 1988. Mm-hmm. That was the first time we were on set together, in the studio together. Mitch Album, New York mm-hmm. Times bestselling author, and he's also a radio show host, nationally syndicated. We work side by side as well. Yeah, he was doing the news or the sports updates. Right. So Mitch and I were. He was. He was so professional, just typing right, away right. the whole time. <laughs> and actually, there's a video or audio tape, not video, but audio tape of Mitch playing the keyboards and Ted playing guitar. How fun. They were jamming together. So um, that's how we met. Um, our first date was officially November seventh, nineteen eighty-eight. We got engaged at our radio station Christmas party, and we got married a month later. Oh my gosh! So the, Wait, it was three, four months. Yes. Wow. So and here we are, thirty-one years later. Okay. So Th- my question. Thirty-one hundred years later. <laughs> <laughs> so my question. <laughs> oh, girl. My question is, what is the secret? Um, is there a secret? Yeah. 
there, there's a lot of secrets. <laughs> Again, how long do we have here? Right. <laughs> so I, I've told you this before, and it's not that's it's not a secret. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of trials and tribulations, and I wrote about him in my book. Mm -hmm. um, just a few years into our marriage, he had an affair, wow. and had a child with another woman. Wow. So I wanted out. I wanted a divorce. Mm -hmm. And he did everything right. He begged me to stay. He went. We. He offered to go to therapy. Whatever it took. Yeah. And you know, it it took a lot. It took a long time. Sure. And I don't think there's a playbook yeah. for dealing with that. In fact, I wrote a. That's why I wrote my book, Married to a Rock Star, yeah. because I bought every single book there was on how do you deal with this. Yeah. And the thing that kept us together was our son. Mm -hmm. It would have been easy for me to leave, especially if we didn't have a child together. But right. I thought, okay, I don't want my son going from mommy's house to daddy's house. And I had friends who had went through a horrible divorce mm -hmm. and it really messed up the kids. Sure, It really did. And I, I just thought, gosh, there's absolutely no way I could fathom not being able to see my son on certain days or even weeks. Right, right. At five years, are you kidding me? So that was a real inspiration for me to make it work mm -hmm. for our son. And we did, you know, ultimately I did love him and I knew yeah. he loved me and that's another key. Yeah, and if you forgiveness don't, is work. <laughs> yeah, forgiveness is work, but yeah. if you don't love each other, if there's any form of ab abuse, especially physical abuse, you right. got to walk away. Sure. But, uh, so that was an inspiration for us to stay together and honestly, for me, learning to find my voice was mm -hmm. a big deal. I, you know, if you can imagine walking into Ted's world, yeah. you know, his world is a machine. Yeah. Like, Think about what you do on a daily basis. You got your own schedule. Yeah. And for somebody to come in and disrupt that, it's yeah. like, oh. Especially you're just... when you're like touring, you're on oh. shows, you have, you know, all these kind of people in your ear, and I'm, I'm sure. Yeah. So yeah. it's very difficult to uh, argue with him yeah. <laughs> and, and for me to find my voice and say, no, this is unacceptable. Mm -hmm. This is what I need to be happy and healthy. So to, it literally, I'm not, I'm not kidding you, Sarah. It took me, so we've been married 31 years. I will say it took me about 25 years wow. into that to find my voice. Wow. And I'm still working on look, it. I mean, I was going to say, no, now look at you. I mean, you have a show. You, uh, tell people also where you can um, find your book. So my book is available on Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. And for anybody who wants an autographed copy, you can go to Old West Antiques at Yahoo.com. And there's actually friends of ours yeah, yeah. who are offering to ship out the book. So, That's you know, great. it's that. It's not a big major production, but I've had a few people ask for autograph copies. I love that. I love that. Well, I want to ask, I want to kind of close this out um, with any advice you have for women, for people, just anyone who's watching this. They either want to start a healthy lifestyle. They want help in their marriage you know maybe they're watching this and they're thinking oh wow I just went through an affair like how how do you move up forward mm -hmm. um or just speaking out in today's like I said political and social climate you know what advice do you have for people I put together a, a women's empowerment program mm -hmm. and it's online and I'll it, it comes out every half a year every six months or every four months because of that reason because I know what it's like not to be healthy mm -hmm. I was 30 pounds heavier than I am now when I was in high school and in college. And I was sick and almost died from toxic mold exposure. Being healthy is a lot better. Mm -hmm. um, I know what it's like to be unhappy unha with losing you know, my relationship and, and going through all of that. So I put together this women's empowerment program and I talk about all of that in detail. That. But basically, it's never too late, Sarah. It's mm -hmm. never too late to start. You have to want. It's like having an addiction. You know, there's always going to be those people who see life as, you know, eh, they're always negative. Yeah. Everything's negative. And then you'll have all those uh, people who, this is a great day. Don't you love the rain? It's perfect. I yeah. love the rain. <laughs> you know, so you, you, you can't change people. Mm -hmm. You have to want to change. That's number one. And then one of the things that I do in my women's empowerment program is I have people write out and get honest with themselves. What do you really want? Mm -hmm. Because you can talk about, I want to start a podcast. I want to lose 20 pounds. I want to do whatever it is. But guess what, girlfriend? You got to actually do it. <laughs> I got to go listen to that. <laughs> that sounds amazing. You got to actually, you got to, yeah. you got to take the steps. Where can people find um, that program? Um, all the information, I, I, right off the top of my head, I don't know. <laughs> um, but all of the information is on my website, which Perfect. is shemainnugent.rocks. 
Perfect. And I'm always on Instagram and Facebook, but shemainnugent.rocks, I, I post the information there. I love that. That's perfect. Now, I you. have one final question with, okay. for you, and I kind of ask this to everyone. It's a little weird, so if you need a second to think about okay. it, yeah. Um, if I knew you better, what would I ask you? Um, uh, let's see. That's, that is a good one. If you <laughs> knew me better, what would you ask me? Mm -hmm. um, I, I, the first things that, that, that come up, but we've already talked about right. it. Dogs. <laughs> yep. How's your dogs? You know, tell me about Happy. Oh, you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because um, my dog, Sadie, has, she's only five. Mm -hmm. She's got hip dysplasia and wow. wobbler's disease. Mm -hmm. And Coco has, ha has elbow dysplasia, mm -hmm. and she's only two. Oh my so gosh. you do know me pretty yeah, well because yeah, yeah. we've already, we've, we've discussed <laughs> we've everything. We've dug in. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Well, Shemaine, thank you so much for coming on. Um, Shemaine Nugent dot rocks. Um, I really appreciate you coming in and kind of chatting with everyone. So, well, thank you for yeah. having me. I appreciate it. Anytime, anytime awesome. I'm here. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you all so much for joining us. Um, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the Strack House on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn, all of your audio streaming services, and of course, we'll see you next week. If you'd like to nominate an inspiring woman, email me at sarahstrackhouse at gmail.com. Thanks for joining. We'll see you next time.